So, uh, unless you can't help it, because, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, yeah, so following the engineer of the year from Boeing, you know, no pressure, right? <laughs> So, my name is Alvaldun Musa, and I'm an applications engineer with the Manufacturing Technology Group at Lockheed Martin Aeronautics. And essentially, the purpose of our group is to develop technologies with the ultimate goal of making the products that we manufacture cheaper and better. And today, I'll be talking to you about how we've leveraged some Polyworks' expandability tools, such as the software development kit and the MacroScript command language, to develop new measurement capabilities through the automation of data analysis. First, uh, a little about Lockheed Martin Aeronautics. Now, as the word aeronautics would imply, we make things that fly through the atmosphere. Uh, here are some examples of some of the things that we've made over the years. Um, pretty cool. One of them is actually the official aircraft of the X-Men. So any fellow Marvel nerds in here that can tell me which one that is? Blackbird. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mach 3.7, I think, 88,000 feet at cruising altitude. Something really impressive. Anyway. Um, so all these aircraft have doors and panels on them. And whenever you have doors and panels, you end up with seams. And we're interested in certain dimensions associated with those seams. And that brings us to our first application of seam validation. So assuming that this dark gray box over here is the aircraft structure, and we install a couple panels on it, we end up with a seam. And we're interested in the gap measurement in between those two panels, as well as the mismatch measurement in between them. And what we have been using so far to get these measurements is a device called the gap gun, which is essentially a 2D laser profilometer uh, with built-in analysis capabilities. But with it being a 2D laser, uh, well, really a 2D measurement device, it does have some limitations. For example, the orientation at which you hold it relative to your seam changes the observed geometry, right? And so that gives you different measurements. And like Michael said earlier, we are the people searching for the truth, right? So no bueno. So um, we have developed some tools that we attach to the gap gun that help orient it relative to the seam correctly, but it doesn't work in 100% of the cases. Now another limitation is location control. We do have check plans with images in it, letting the operators know generally where they're supposed to be holding the gap gun, uh, but humans are not robots, and so they're not reliable, repeatable, or accurate. Well, some are, but you know, uh, gifted. Uh, so we thought, well, why not collect 3D data and do a six degree of freedom alignment, that essentially solves our problem, right? We control orientation and we, we control location. But first, uh, we had to find a measurement device that was fast enough, really faster than, than what we were doing uh, to do this because, you know, production and business and all that. So um, luckily, we did find something that was fast enough and just as accurate and just as repeatable. So, we started moving forward uh, with the software side of things. Now, for seam validation, we ended up with two major components for our solution. Uh, the first is to create the nominal projects, and the second is to uh, perform the measurements. And to create the nominal projects, we built a very simple graphical user interface that pretty much anybody could use with five minutes of training. Um, and upon launching it, it pulls relevant information from our cloud, and upon executing the process, it launches an instance of inspector, and passes all that relevant information over to it using the software development kit. Then, using the MacroScript command language, we create a, a nominal project per seam and store them all in a single workspace, setting us up for a modular measurement approach. So we can pull any check plan and we can pull any combination of those seams into a single project and measure them. And this is what that kind of looks like. So we, brought, we browse for a check plan and then we select the seam name and the coding configuration, which will make sense here in a bit, um, which launches the instance of inspector, like I mentioned. And now the operator's guided through the process. Uh, this has been improved a little um, before this presentation, but anyway, you get what you get. So uh, you select the CAD models associated with the seam. Uh, they're imported. And then the software will ask you whether or not you'd like to use a file to identify the measurement locations of interest. So we'll say no here just to go through the manual process and the operator will create cross sections uh, letting us know where we want to take our measurements. And then Polyworks will ask for one more thing, which is a point on the other end of the seam to give us an indication of what the width of that gap is. And that's pretty much all the operator has to do. They just have to answer one more numerical question and they're done and the nominal project is created for that seam. Now it's worth noting that this will be an extremely tedious process uh, to perform uh, manually and so it really 
kills the application from a business point, point of view. Okay. So once we have our nominal projects, uh, it's time to measure things. And so we pretty much followed the same pattern here, built a very simple graphical user interface. And upon launching it, of course, Industry 9.0 or 4.0 and it being 2019 and all that, we pull things from the cloud. And upon executing the process, it launches, again, an instance of Inspector and passes that information over to it using the software development kit. And this time, using the MacroScript command language, we pull the relevant seams from that nominal workspace that we created earlier. And since this is a measurement task, we collect data. And now that we have everything that we need in that Inspector project, we pass the results back into the cloud and give the operator a little uh, visual indication of how the seam is doing. And this is what that looks like. So we launch the executable, select your check plan, select the device that you'll be measuring with. Note the operator selecting PSL reader. So we'll be importing data as opposed to actually collecting it. Launch, it launches an instance of inspector. Um, it imports all the seam geometries um, associated with the check plan. And then the operator is asked to import the data in this case. So there's that. Since the measurement device could be anywhere in the measurement um, area, uh, we really can't reuse an alignment over and over again, so we do request a point pair alignment from the operator. Uh, and then they're asked to confirm that it did converge cor uh, correctly, because uh, Michael, as you probably know, a lot of parts in the aerospace industry are really thin and um, can flex and warp and not look the way they're supposed to look. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the operator gets a little feel-good message to help with self-esteem, um, and all the measurements are color-coded, letting us know whether we failed high or low, or whether we're trending high or low. So, we don't always pass SeamVal, and I mean, that could be due to a variety of reasons, but more often than not, it's due to the coatings that are applied to the panels. Sometimes the coatings are applied thick, sometimes there's an air bubble between the coatings and the panel, and sometimes they're applied thin. Now, wherever, whenever they're thick, you end up with a clashing condition or very small gaps. And whenever they're thin, you end up with wide gaps, both undesirable uh, conditions. And so we thought, why don't we just go make sure that the coatings are applied correctly before the panel makes its way to final assembly, gets installed onto the aircraft. So if you please wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so anyway, um, we went to the component final finishes facility. And we noticed that people were using their fingers, eyeballs, and flashlights to check whether or not the coatings have been applied correctly. Uh, not exactly metrology grade uh, equipment there. <laughs> so we said, hey, we have an idea. How about we scan the panel prior to the application of the coatings, let them apply their coatings, and then scan it again. And as long as the two scans are correctly spatially related relative to each other, you can extract measurement points of interest. And from that, you can extract measurements of interest. And so we did a little proof of concept. Um, here's an example of uh, an area that was identified as being thick or potentially having an air bubble. So we actually cut the coatings and looked in from the side. And sure enough, there it is. I'm not sure if you guys can see it up there, but there's an air bubble, I promise, uh, in between the coatings and the panel. And one more thing that I'd like you to notice is, do I have a laser on here? No? OK. Well, you have uh, lines in the data, right? So the reason that is is because we segmented the data. And that's because the panels flex and warp differently, whether or not, you know, depending on whether or not the coatings have been applied. So the mechanical properties of the panel changes. And so what we've decided to do is locate um, local measurement features or local alignment features and perform those local alignments and extract our measurement results with those active local alignments. And that's why the data looked segmented. It's because we actually cut it up and locally aligned it everywhere. So we pretty much followed the same approach uh, to our solution. We created this graphical user interface, fairly simple. Anybody could use it, more or less. Uh, we pull relevant information from our cloud. Um, and then upon executing the measurement process, we launch an instance of Inspector and pass all the information over to it using the software development kit. And then using the MacroScript command language, we pull the nominal projects that are pre-made. Um, and again, since this, this is a measurement process, we pull in the data. And once we get our results, we pass that over into the cloud. But before we start measuring, uh, we have to set up the part, right? And so we actually use PolyWorks Build Inspect to set up the fixturing components on our table repeatedly. And that way, we know that they're always in the same place, which means our panels are always in the same place, 
which means that we only have to do the alignment once, and then we can reuse it over and over again as a pre-alignment and converge from there. And this is what the rest of the measurement process looks like. We launch an executable. Uh, we say what the panel condition is. We input the part number and the order number, which is our version of the serial number. And then we measure the, the or we start the measurement process. It launches an instance of inspector. This panel has already been scanned before, uh, so it's asking us if we would like to do it again. In this case, we're gonna say yes, um, and we'll import the data. Now, since we are importing the data, we're gonna be doing a point pair because we don't know whether or not that data has been aligned in the past. And that's pretty much all the operator has to do. Everything from there is done automatically. The operator gets a single page PDF report letting them know whether or not um, we passed or where we failed and the mode of the failure as well as a color map uh, giving us a qualitative understanding of uh, the performance of the coatings. Um, that's pretty much it, really, for both my applications. Um, the point that I'm trying to get across here is these would be two extremely tedious, um, fairly complex metrology tasks that are pretty much made accessible to anybody in the factory with a little bit of training. And I think that was y'all's goal with the software development kit and the MacroScript command language. And it's working for us, so that's pretty much it. Any questions? I'll take that as a no, so. <laughs> okay, what? Thank you. <laughs>